And here we are, board number two in Austria. We have Calvin Coolberry in Texas. In England, we have George Linkert coming to us from Minnesota. France is Mike Walsh coming to us from my home state of Maryland. Uh, go Terps. And Germany, we have Gary Sturley out of the UK. Italy, we have Peter Cook from New York. Russia, we have Kirk Vaughn from Tennessee. And in Turkey, we have Ethan Halusa DeLay. Um, and of these names, I know I recognize George Linkert and Mike Walsh uh, from previous games and tournaments, but I don't uh, actually know their play style. Um, and uh, the rest of them, I, I don't know anything about. Do you guys have any familiarity with these players? This, no. this is a very new group to me. Um, uh, I, I don't know if they're uh, mostly email players, or uh, but but this is great. Um, we saw several of these in the these players in the first round uh, play very well, and uh, so it, it, you know they. I'm guessing a lot of these players are new to each other as well, which will uh, certainly make an interesting dynamic as they open negotiations, having no idea of each other's play styles either. And with that, um, oh, sorry, Siobhan. Oh, no, I was going to say that us face-to-face -face players get very used to seeing the same faces over and over and over again, that it's rare that we see a board like this. We're just like, I have no idea how these people work together. Yeah, and even George and Mike, we know from online play, um, from the virtual face-to-face. -face. All right, let's let's uh, let's dive in here onto board number two. We'll start in the, the West with Siobhan. Um, tell us what you see. Uh, well, currently, I still see the list of players. Because I didn't click the button. <laughs> ah. uh, um, it looks like this France is going to fare a little better than the one from our previous board. So that's something. Um, but a whole lot of fairly standard stuff. Um, England opens to North and Norwegian and Yorkshire. You get a bounce in Burgundy, possibly a range, possibly not. Who knows? Um, and Italy seems to be going eh, very standard. Yeah, it's a bit snoozy, but after last uh, game's uh, death march from France, <laughs> Jeez. a little relieving. Uh, uh, Adam, take us around the east. Well, well let's look at Austria. Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, this is this is just not something you see very often, and uh, there's a reason you don't see it very often. And, and let, let's see how it plays out. But um, y you know, I mean, I. I eh, we bounce, we bounce Galicia that may or may not be arranged, um, but we elected to move to Romania instead of Serbia. Um, so we've, we've angered the Russians by doing that. Um, and we did that while we're bouncing Galicia. So we didn't even get to put that army into Budapest or Trieste. So we have no play on Serbia other than moving out of Romania, except that that can now be bounced by the Turks. The Italy, Italians have a lot of incentive to maybe be thinking about Greece now, since the only thing to stop it is that army in Bulgaria. So uh, th this is just going to be a mess for Austria. But but we'll see. I mean, maybe there's a way to work through it. All right. Let's uh, let's see what happens. Uh, starting in staying in the in the west uh, east. I'm sorry, Adam, take us. Uh, tell us how it turned out here. Okay, and again, once again, showing that um, not being privy to negotiations, we uh, sometimes completely fail in what we say. Clearly, the Austrians uh, felt like they had a strong ally in the Turks, and the Turks came through, um, and Serbia goes untouched. Uh, I still don't like Trieste and Venice continuing to try to swap places. That's not going to work. It's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, but you know, this is not horrible for Austria. They'll put down an army in Budapest. That fleet trapped in Trieste is a waste. Um, and it's, you know, can you work with both the Italians and the Turks? I doubt it in the long run. So we'll see. I mean, landing the army on the uh, in Greece um, by convoy, this is this was a bold, uh, a bold risk, right? Even if even if he was confident based on negotiations. Um, OK, uh, back to the West then, Siobhan, what do you see? Uh, England, as expected, takes Belgium, since they were the only one who had play on it, gets two builds. Germany takes the usuals, lets Russia into Sweden, which I would too. I wouldn't want to see Russia fall too quickly. Um, and France takes Burgundy. So they actually wanted to be there. All right, let's see how the, um, the builds look. Winter 1901, we have two uh, fleet. We've seen a lot of England's get Belgium today. Um, Maybe it's maybe it's a new trend in the hobby, uh, but this nets uh, England two fleet builds, which are pointed to the east. France puts down a fleet in Brest, always interesting, uh, along with the army. This is a uh, relatively neutral, but um, potentially anti-English. And in Turkey, we've got two armies again. 
<laughs> it is the day of the Turkish army. Uh huh. <laughs> and armies, uh, predictable armies in Budapest, uh, Moscow. I don't think Russia had. Uh, that was a rebuild. I don't think Russia had much choice there. Yeah. And uh, Italian fleet. Okay, let us uh, stay in the West yeah. with. Uh, I, I just want to just before you jump into the the spring. I mean, I think this is really interesting because. Um, you know, this this opens some options for Russia, right? Because Russia can now say, okay, you took Sev, go into Rome, go, I'll support you into Rome, go into Serbia, and we are off to the races here, right? Uh, you piffed my fleet in, in Sev, so that's no longer a threat. Let's do this. And, you know, I'm curious to see if that's how this plays out. I mean, I think that argument would be stronger if uh, Turkey had put down at least one fleet here. Um, I would want at least fleet smart enough for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah. This is, uh, I, yeah, this looks like a very tough sell. And I mean, again, you know, there's a lot of diplomatic work to do now here with Eastern Med with this underbelly just being uh, very soft and tender. Yep. Um, so, all right, let's, uh, let's move ahead. Siobhan, we'll start with you in the West. And here is spring of 1902. Tell me what stands out. Okay. Um, England goes to the channel, but France doesn't, which is interesting um, because everything else seems to be moving north. Um, the support to Picardy, I just I'm not curious. sure I see. It's curious, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, England convoys away from Belgium to go to Denmark. <laughs> With support or from Kiel goes Sweden. to Helgoland. <laughs> I, did England just piss everyone off? Um, <laughs> not, and, Russia, not Russia. Yeah, not, you know, Russia is Russia's his friend. That's true. For um, now, for now, for now, we'll see how long that lasts. But now, you know, now England has two units on Sweden, a plus a fleet in Norwegian. I mean, it, the move to the channel is, you know, potentially worrying, but uh, yeah, at least um, it's not, at least it's not in the Belgian graveyard. Yeah. This army. I mean, we'll see if Germany and France can decide who gets Belgium. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's the West uh, back in the East. Uh, Adam, what do you see? Yeah, this is interesting, right? You have the Russians now supporting the Austrians into Sev. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, clearly not what the Turks had in mind because the Turks were supporting Romania to hold. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Um, the the, the um, Austrian sends the other two units south. Uh, certainly looks like an AI and um, whether that means we kill Turkey or we take on both Turkey and Russia at once, I guess we're going to have to see. All right, let's take a peek ahead. We'll stay in the east, uh, fall of 1902. Adam, how did this turn out? <laughs> wow. It, it, it looks like we kill Turkey uh, and, we, and we do so uh, pretty rapidly and, and effectively. But, but um, look at this. I mean, now the Turks support the Russians into Sev. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, the, the Turks were actually a little bit off the page because they were actually trying to support Galicia into Romania, which would have been absolutely killer to Austria uh, had the Russians actually done that. This is a uh, bizarre This is a bizarre move, isn't it, Galicia to Silesia here? It, it seems a little premature to be doing that, right, when, you've, when you're not even sure you can, you don't have your, all your home centers, you're not completely sure you're going to get it back. Um, it's a lot of faith on... Uh, the, the Turks supporting you down, right? I mean, look at this. Turkey is using half of their units to support the Russians uh, into other dots. Uh, that's how upset the Turks were about uh, the the apparent Austro Austrian uh, stab last turn. So yeah, this is uh, a really this is a really tragic um, miscommunication here or yep, uh, yep. or mi misplay. I mean, uh, you know, Turkey could have supported himself into Rome and just taken a chance uh, between Khan and Smyrna. Um, but, uh, but so be it. This is a, uh, you know, this, this could have been worse, right? I mean, Galicia could have taken a pot shot at Vienna or Budapest instead of, and, oh, yeah. and the Turks supporting Ukraine down. Yeah. Right. I mean, that could have been three, three dots. Yep. Notice by the way, that Serbia is still unclaimed Unchanged. at the end of 1902. <laughs> yep. Very unusual. Siobhan, take us around the West. England supported the French army into Belgium from Gaston. <laughs> and it's the most amazing thing I've seen in a long time. Um, England convoy. Or convoy, right, sorry, not clear. supported. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so it looks like ENF have patched up whatever differences they might have had. <laughs> the leaving of Belgium was probably arranged so that it could be convoyed, the French army could be convoyed and supported in. Um, and Russia seems to be helping at least England on this. So the move to Silesia doesn't surprise me that much. So we'll see. 
I, right. I just want to ask, on, on what planet does France make that move? Why don't you move Burgundy to Belgium, support it from Picardy, and just ask the English to support that and follow Gascony up to Burgundy? This makes no sense from France. <laughs> it's so much more well, fun. Need, it's more fun, but it's just idiotic, right? Why do you why do you make that move? Are you I, saying that fun is idiotic? <laughs> yeah. It's 2020. There are no rules anymore, Adam. Just get out of the way. <laughs> just relax and have a beer. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is uh, this is how the builds turned out, and France did not build. Um, that's they had five units on the board. They lost something. No, they they, no, got... they just took Belgium. They should be plus one. They they yeah. waived or they NMR. Oh, it must yeah, have been NMR. Uh, elsewhere, we've got um, a fascinating army build in Rome. This might be in the army Liverpool category. Uh, mm -hmm. It is not a unit that really is useful uh, wow. in any in any way, um, at least not immediately. Germany uh, Germany picks his own poison while uh, Turkey decides to try to stay with uh, Russia. So this, you know, if the R the RT could have been much more efficient here, um, it was not. All right, let us do another year here. Um, spring of 1903. Where did we end up there? Was that in the east or the west? I can't remember. Uh, in the west. All right, let's go back to the west. Siobhan, uh, take us through spring of 1903. All right, so we get some more movement uh, in and around the North Sea, um, but nobody's really taken anything. Just some positioning of fleets, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, pretty good positioning though, right? For England to get into Helgoland uh, yeah. inside of Norway. It's it's good uh, positioning. Um, the more I look at it, the more I think that the French intentionally waived that build because what do you really need another army for? You don't want to peeve off Italy, and keeping that in pocket is always good. Yeah. It's uh, lots of strategic flexibility now and tactical flexibility, both uh, all in one wave. All right, takes around the this east. Does, this does illustrate the limitations of an English army in Denmark, though. Um, yeah. Really, what you really want to be doing is have a, having a fleet there to give you a little bit more flexibility and play on the Baltic. But, um, but, but, but I'm sure that they'll get the army down into Kiel at, at some point, and we'll see where that goes. That's hard. Um, to, I mean. Yeah, go ahead. All right, take go us ahead, around right the up. east, Adam. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll move into the east now. Okay, so now the, you know, Russia has, uh, sorry, Turkey has completely thrown in with Russia this at this point, uh, which is probably the right thing for Turkey to be doing, right? Because Turkey's not going to get out of the box by throwing their lot in with, uh, with anybody else. Um, it's interesting to see that it or actually it looks like the Italians are not being overly helpful for the, to the, to the uh, Austrians. Um, uh, it, it, it's hard to know if they're working together and uh, uh, Italy was supposed to move unsupported into Bulgaria or something, but um, obviously that was no help to uh, to Austria. Will Serbia get taken this year? Let us wait and find out. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out in the fall uh, with what happens in Greece, whether yep. uh, Austria. I mean, it, Italy did not convoy to Albania, did not move Rome to Venice. So there's lots of possibilities. But now Italy has two armies that are just simply. Um, I, I, yeah, that, yeah. thanks for pointing that out. I, I don't get it. I mean, if you're attacking Austria, convoy to Albania and move to Venice. If you're not attacking Austria, convoy to Apulia and move up to. I, I mean, why are do, you in Rome do, in the first place? Do something. Do yeah. something with these yeah. units. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move ahead to the fall, 1903, and in the east. Uh, talk us through it, Adam. Yeah, I mean, if this was the plan, I mean, we could have. I guess they could have convoyed to Bulgaria in the first place, right? And just had the units and uh, armies in uh, in Bulgaria to begin with, but instead elects to put the fleet into Greece and convoy into Albania now. I guess there's a subterfuge element there, and and it looks like perhaps it worked because the Austrians were supporting the Italians. So uh, that was what uh, Italy was going for, and and it worked. And now Italy has the jump there. A um, whole lot of nothing elsewhere other than the Turks backing the fleet off the Black Sea. All right, take us around the west, Siobhan. Uh France has committed the fleets, and I think rightly so, made a drop into the Med. Um, Italy has fully committed the other direction, and if not now, when? Especially with such a good friend in England. Um, that friend in England has taken two Russian dots, Sweden and St. Pete, loses Denmark for the effort, but eh, and they take Holland off the German. Yeah, this is it's an interesting and kind of weird set of moves for England in the sense that um, even if they had gotten Sweden, then uh, uh, even if they had dislodged Sweden, it would have retreated to Norway. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know. I kind of wonder if uh, if some of this might have been arranged. Um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, 
Yeah, England gets to build two at the end of it because despite only going up one, they did have a piff. Yeah. So they can pivot now uh, to to France if they want. Yeah. Uh, other, otherwise, they still have really nice uh, position here. They, they'll get back um, Denmark anytime they want. Yeah. So, all right. Let us uh, check out some builds. And here they are. England pops down an army and fleet Edinburgh. So this is clearly not anti-French. Um, the question is how, what exactly uh, they'll go after. But with Russia not getting a build, St. Petersburg is not going to be in danger anytime soon. I, I would have liked two. I would like to see two armies there. You convoy yeah. one off, and you still have one on England to protect if France does something. Um, this is a lot more limiting. You got your one army destroyed in Denmark. You need those armies. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I don't know. I'm not, I mean, I'm not setting up for, uh, I, I wouldn't be thinking uh, solo at this point. And the, <laughs> the armies are, you know, people like to talk about, you need armies, armies, armies. But if you're, if you, all you care about is topping the board, you can do that with only fleets as, um, yeah. so as long as you could guarantee, as long as you can get those armies into play right away. And it kind of looks like you probably could, um, but now you get, you get the army into play and you get the fleet, um, in Norwegian sea, which where it can potentially, uh, help protect Norway if you want. Anyway, let's move on to, uh, actually, should we? Yeah, they're almost through fall by five. Let's go through 1904 here. Um, and uh, let us start in the east with uh, Adam. Take us through it. OK, uh, Turkey is just trying to come out directly through Bulgaria. That doesn't work. Um, and the Italians continue to make their play. They're working uh, very efficiently with the Russians who cut Budapest and help them into Serbia. So uh, very effective attack right there by by Italy and Russia. Um, and this is going to be a tough position for Austria to be able to do anything. And, 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 and they should be down to two, I think, this year. Normally, you would see Turkey um, like being a problem by being ignored like this, but uh, they're getting uh, Italy and Russia are getting away with it. So I think I think Turkey can afford to have this kind of position right now. I think the problem. I mean, I think what you what you're seeing from Italy, you're probably liking right now that Italy has put two fleets into Tunis and Tyrrhenian Sea. Um, otherwise, I'd be really nervous, honestly, because you know you, you, your chances of getting out of the box uh, in in that kind of position could be very difficult. But the fact that Italy's turned around, you know, maybe you got a shot. But really, maybe what you want to be doing is either going up to the Black Sea, or if you're working with Russia, you going up to Aegean. You got to pick a direction and get uh, get your other units in play. Um, OK, let's take us around the West where there is some activity. Siobhan. There is quite a bit of activity. Um, I George in England has trusted the Frenchman for one season too long. Um, the hold in London is a little regrettable now because at least yeah. if it were in Yorkshire, yeah. you could go to Liverpool. Um, but yeah, that's. Italy comes back to the West to protect against what turns out to be the French fake out. And nicely done, Mike. There's really no reason not to move this uh, army. Yeah. It's, it's so unbelievably trusting of George and there's, there's no reason to move to Yorkshire would ever be contestable with an ally. Um, we'll see if, uh, France lives to regret or learn, ends up regretting, uh, turning on England, uh, before having secured, uh, either, mm -hmm. you know, a solid place in Germany or, or, uh, a defensive front against Italy. Let's stay in the West for fall and, oh goodness. Oh goodness. So we wind, up, we wind up with a convoy to Liverpool, which is glorious. Not, glorious. Great play. Yeah. Glorious. Um, yeah. You know, London tries to convoy to Denmark while Denmark tries to go to Kiel with support from Holland. Which is interesting. Denmark's, uh, yep, yeah, Holland supports Denmark to Kiel. So, okay. Um, it's mildly confusing, but I'll take it. <laughs> um, and the Russian is just kind of there. All right. Uh, Adam takes around the east. Yeah, I mean, you know, Austria is trying to make the best of their situation, um, which which there's not much to be to be made of it. Um, uh, they get into Serbia, but lose uh, Budapest and Trieste. Uh, you know, like I said, it was going to be very hard for them to not go be down to two after this turn, and that's playing out. Um, 
the the um, Turks make the ver uh, the Turks and the Italians bounce in the Aegean. No surprises there. Um, if you're Italy, you certainly don't want Turkey advancing. Uh, maybe you're okay having him bottled up, but really what you want to convince Turkey to do is turn on Russia um, so that you can have free reign in that area. Yeah, it's interesting. Bulgaria could have gone to Serbia, which would have bounced Budapest uh, and blown up the unit so that, um, so well, Austria uh, actually would still have had to by re retreating to Albania. Yeah, cl clearly right. not clearly not the trust between uh, Italy and Turkey, right? Because because Turkey could either go to Aegean or could go to Bulgaria as they yeah. did. So I, 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 spring. I presume that Turkey didn't want, or Italy didn't want to let Turkey have the chance of getting a build. Yep. Um, speaking of builds, let's see how those turned out. We've got another French fleet in the water. Um, France is France. France is managing to be fighting both Germany and England, and getting away with it. Um, this is not something you see a whole lot. We have another army, Rome. <laughs> All right, we have a new Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's almost justified here, though, right? I mean, because now you can go up to Tyrolia and and follow sure. Venice. I think I think last time it was kind of weird because Venice was open, but I think there's a, there's maybe a rationale here. Maybe you don't need the extra fleet. You're not going to go full hog against Turkey yet, so I, I'm okay with it in this position. But I think what it does is it commits you to fighting Russia um, more likely than not in the yeah. near future. This is yeah. this is saying that you want uh, land uh, land centers and. Currently, those are either held by Russia or will soon be held by Russia. But you might figure that's going to happen anyway, and so I might as well get in the best you position. Well for it. Yeah. All right. Let us. Oh, so let's leave this game in after winter of 1904. We will return to this uh, in the next go round through these games. Uh, that... All right. Let's move along. Uh, keep the train moving um, to Lucretia Mott. Um, the Lucretia Mott board and a little background on Lucretia Mott, another 19th century figure. Uh, she was a Quaker, an abolitionist, a women's rights activist, and a social reformer. She had formed the idea of reforming the position of women in society when she was amongst the women excluded from the World Anti-Slavery Convention in 1840. In 1848, she was invited by Jane Hunt to a meeting that led to the first meeting about women's rights. Mott helped write the Declaration of Sentiments during the 1848 Seneca Falls Convention. Uh, interesting stuff. Thank you, Bill, for uh, for that background. Back to the board here. This board uh, was the one featuring George Linkert and Mike, Mike Walsh in the West. Just to refresh ourselves with what was happening. Uh, right. The convoy into Liverpool, which right. uh, made us happy. The Mid-Atlantic holding was a little curious, but with two fleets, uh, Italian fleets nearby, it makes sense. Uh, and it looks like a whole lot of uh, dipsy doodle <laughs> between... <laughs> Uh, Calvin Culbury and Peter Cook in Austria and Italy with Russia um, <laughs> experiencing a uh, what can only be described what must be described as a very strange uh, experience in the East. All right, let us move forward. The builds um, found another right, right, right. More another Italian army armies around. in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is one where we saw that more than once and we're perplexed by it. Yeah. And uh, this one was also where uh, Turkey uh, got stuck in a box and failed to move out. And mm -hmm. we, we thought that uh, she just had to pick one direction or the other here um, and was stymied in both. Okay, let us then go to the spring 1905. And Siobhan, let's hear about the, the West from you. Sure. Um, a lot of movement again. The French using that army on the island to piddle around convoying another into Wales, likely for a supported attack on London in the fall, pushing those other fleets down around into the Med, um, which is great as Italy is occupied elsewhere. Um, Germany takes Holland, likely arranged at this point. Um, and yeah, go FG, go. And uh, Adam, tell us about the East. More, more like go France, go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. <laughs> uh, and go Russia, go, right? I mean, look at this. The Italians support the Russians down into Serbia. The Russians walk into Vienna. Um, absolutely uh, great position for, for Russia here. Uh, Turkey is no threat. Uh, basically neutralized your threats. Um, and, and really... Italy is is on side and, and minimally a threat, right? As as well, um, they're, they're sitting in a position where they really just can't do a heck of a lot because of those armies just kind of stuck there. 
um, and, and the fleets just not not much movement by the fleets, and we're about to see France come around, perhaps. Uh, it's hard to yeah, yeah. It's hard to understand why uh, Italy hasn't moved to the Eastern Med at all yeah. uh, in these series of turns. But okay, let's push ahead here into the fall of 1905, and uh, Adam, start with you in the East. Yep. Well, so finally, Turkey uh, does make that move to the Black Sea and Armenia. I'm not actually sure that this is the right uh, decision. I mean, again, I'm not privy to the negotiations, but, um, you know, this is a situation where I, I might have seen uh, more opportunities for Turkey to try to work with Russia. Uh, but, but you know, the, the choice was made and, and it may work out. We'll see. Um, meanwhile, we've got just a whole lot of a movement. The the Italian, after supporting Russia into Serbia, then supports themselves into Serbia. Um, and um, and why does that go? Oh, oh, Russia walks out to go to yeah. Budapest. So this may have been an arranged situation. It's hard to tell. Um, and you do have the uh, the French and the the French and the uh, Italians now starting to butt some heads. So again, this is why I thought maybe the Turks would have more options going after Italy if Italy was going to have to turn around. Um, but, but again, we'll see. All right, Siobhan, tell us about uh, all the nuttiness in the West. Um, nothing too terribly exciting here. As expected, a supported attack on London. There wasn't anything the Italian or the English could do about that. Um, going back to Liverpool. Yeah, I guess you had to support yourself in with Eddie and, oh, no, but the fleet and Eddie. Yeah, so, you, didn't have to, you didn't have to support yourself. Um, either a mistake or just a decision being overly cautious for some reason. I'm not sure I agree with it. Um, Germany keeps Holland, self bounce. Yeah, there's some shifting in Scandinavia. <laughs> Thank this you. Is, this has got to be an oops. That's right? oopsie. Um, and that, that hurts because. Hard to, yeah. see any, hard to see any reason for it either, right? There's no reason for it. Um, like, why would Sweden I mean, even bother moving? Attack on St. Pete next, but it's already yours. And now you go down two? Yeah, if you're going to move there, if you're going to move Sweden, go to Bothnia, right? So that way, yeah. at least it, at least if he goes to St. Petersburg, then you're in Bothnia, maybe. But wh why you would walk to Finland there and, I, and, and take that risk, it's just completely unnecessary. It's just a, just, just a mistake, and it happens. You know, it happens to the best of the well, best. On, person, but yeah. on the flip side, actually, if you're Russia, why, why do you go to Sweden here instead of St. Pete? Uh that's a that's another great question, right? Because we because St. Pete is is a given, right? And so St. Pete's a given. Is a given. But, yeah. but again, just just looking at uh, at England's point of view, if you're expecting Russia to go to St. Pete, don't you just go to Bothnia anyway? I mean, why Finland? Yeah, very curious uh, on both I parts. <laughs> would love to hear from one of those players later. Um, uh, we won't get the chance to have them on the stream, but so yeah. France is even. Um, England yep. England is down. Two. two uh so germany and russia are the ones who who, who get the builds out of that Correct. russia also picks up vienna so russia's dropping two units here mm -hmm. um and uh but doesn't have sevastopol open so probably two armies here let's find out and the answer is yes two armies germany puts down a fleet <laughs> and uh huh it's an optimistic fleet isn't it? it it's the only fleet they could put down but it, uh, yeah, what's it gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a great question. I I, I kind of I mean I think it's interesting. I mean I think the ri the risk there obviously is if Russia goes into Silesia and Bohemia or something like that. But I mean on the other hand, like you probably want to be friendly with the French right now. England's England's going down like a sack of sack of whatever, yeah. <laughs> and so. You know, it's maybe less flexible, but on the other hand, it it just kind of shows where you're throwing your lot in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe we'll see it go to Kiel um, and uh, sure. and try to help out uh, toward the west. This is this is all about diplomacy at this point. Yep. Um, Italy puts down a fleet in Rome, which uh, is clearly <laughs> there's no ambiguity <laughs> about that one. Zero. Right, let's move forward then. And spring of 1906 moves. Uh, and Siobhan, tell us about the west. Um, as expected, the fleet in Rome, Tis and Tunis all move. France just gets out of the way. It doesn't even bother. 
Um, the French, meanwhile, and the English homeland are just marching their way up, setting up to make an attack on Eddie in the fall, which will work with no problem. Uh, Germany mostly doesn't move. Um, I love the Russian fleet in Skagarak. That's <laughs> going to be a problem for someone. Uh, yeah, who? I mean, this can only help uh, England against uh, against France here, but maybe that's the point. Mm -hmm. uh, except uh, we see that St. Petersburg is now, now will fall. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, it's nice to have this fleet further west, right? I mean, it's in the action now, which is he gets the chance to decide who gets North Sea and under what conditions. Yeah, and after St. Pete, maybe it goes to, maybe it helps out with Norway, goes to Norway. Oh, this uh, this game there. amuses me greatly, and it is the longest game of the night, which tells me that this chicanery continues for several <laughs> yeah. years. Yeah, let's keep on going here. Adam, tell us about the East. No, this is just wild, right? I mean, Italy is going full full out against France, who's pulling back, right? And so <laughs> Italy is now in a, in a, in a really, uh, fairly good position there. Mao didn't move to, to block anything. Um, this might have been, you know, negotiated that uh, Italy wasn't going to do that. And then and then away we go. So uh, that's kind of cool. Of course, in the background, you have Italy uh, as part of the IT giving Turkey Bulgaria, which, you know, it might be a move through with the idea yeah. that it's going to go to Romania or something like that. But, you know, you are potentially in a situation where you might end up with a poll if uh, if Turkey yeah. ends up there and, and you're going to sort of live with that. Yeah, they can guarantee um, Romania for Bulgaria, but not without risking Serbia here. Right. So um, let's uh, let's find out uh, what happens there. And and they do Ru it. Russia, I guess, is wrong. Um, Oof. Although yep. it looks like Budapest was cut, so Trieste was never at risk. So it was um, no. Actually, this was a good set of moves by Italy. There was nothing. Uh, there was no way for Russia to take everything. Serbia was or everything Korea. got cut? Yeah, everything got yeah. cut because uh, Trieste and Serbia both moved to Budapest. Uh, so the Budapest was cut regardless of what yeah. it supported. Vienna was cut by Tyrolia and Romania mm -hmm. was cut by Bulgaria. So this was a guarantee. Yeah, this great a guarantee. Great set of orders. Nicely done. Yep. Perfectly yep. written. Uh, way to go, Ethan and yep. Peter Cook. Yep. Uh, all right. What about the West? Uh, Siobhan? Um, nothing terribly exciting in the West. France is just holding off the Italian fleets and a bounce in Marseille. Kind of boring there. As expected, climb up the island to take Edinburgh. Um, Germany takes a stab for Denmark, does not make it this turn, but we'll get it there probably next year with Berlin going to Baltic. And I love that Russian fleet just dancing around if you're going to take St. <laughs> so uh, Russia stays even yeah. uh, in the north somehow. Just, but just swaps Norway for Sweden. Is, is going to pull in the south. Oh, the the south. Mwah. love. All right. All right. So uh, we get uh, Turkish army. Now we do have a, a true IT going here. Um, yeah. At long last, <laughs> France plops down a fleet in Marseille and uh, uh, should be able to hold on. Yeah, should be able to hold on, right? As long as until uh, Munich falls or if Munich uh, gets involved in the action. Do, do, uh, do we like the fleet in Marseille or, or would we prefer an army? I'm, I'm just wondering because that fleet is not going anywhere, right? And I mean, not that an army is either, but I just wonder if, the, if an army ends up being a little bit more helpful in the long run. You've got so many fleets. It gives you purchase over. It gives you purchase over Leon. So there is. It creates guesses down here uh, that yeah. wouldn't exist otherwise. But um, France has excess units up here. So mm -hmm. you know, a convoy down to Gascony uh, will lock this up. Actually, yeah. Yeah, um, that's true. So ex yeah, except will, you can't do it without risking Spain. Um, because you need for, to use yeah. power. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, you're going to probably maybe a convoy to Brest and just walk it down. Mm -hmm. you yeah, got, you or, got the two turns to do it before Tyrrhenian Sea gets to North Africa. So yeah, yeah, or you take it, or you take the chance now and just and just end it. Uh, yeah. Let's find out. Let's see what Mike Walsh does and Siobhan, uh take us through the West. Um. Okay, we've got a bounce in North Africa. Wow. Interesting. There's a whole lot of red arrows there. Um. Well done by France, if I like that. Um, maybe it was actually hoping to get somewhere. Um, 
do, 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 pulling Liverpool to Yorkshire is interesting. English, the English retreat it back into London, which mm -hmm. is going to cause some headaches for the French player for a while. And the Germans take the North Sea, which is With just kind of chaotic and, and beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, he can the French can retake London here, but uh, it's going to tie up uh, mm -hmm. the English Channel here for another. But it's their own fault that the English fleet is there because they were the ones who supported the Germans into North Sea. <laughs> All right, what about the East? Uh, what stands out, Adam? Uh, you know, the Germans help the help the Russians into uh, Tyrolia, which is you know a bit of a pyrrhic victory for for the Russians, considering they just lost Budapest and. Uh, I'm not really sure that they're going to be able to retake it uh, or even hold Vienna. I guess they probably can hold Vienna. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, uh, the IT is continuing to push forward. I think, you know, Italy's probably making a smart play by giving the dots to Turkey at this point. It might come back to bite them later, but it looks like there's definitely growth opportunities in the backside of the line through Russia that uh, Turkey can make that might dissuade him from uh, from actually stabbing, stabbing uh, the, the Italian. Yeah, uh, so Turkey should... Uh... No, Tur no, Turkey does have, uh, there is some guesswork here. Yep, it looks like there's some guesses with to hold, respect to Rum. Yeah. To hold on to Budapest and uh, keep Romania. Yep. Uh, yeah, it would have been better to get the, if the you're just fighting. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, let's, uh, let's see what happens here in the fall. We'll stay in the east and uh, guesses incorrectly. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> You know, it's, it's it's some interesting choices. And, you know, again, why is that fleet in Greece sitting there, right? If it was in Albania or even Ionian to go down towards North Africa, maybe you'd, you'd prefer it. But it's just it's just sitting there doing nothing. And it's, ha it's been there for quite some time now. Um, and so what do we have? We have a little bit of uh, dot swapping that ultimately I don't think gets anybody anything, right? We, just, we get rid of that. We get uh, Italy takes Vienna from Russia. <laughs> Russia takes Romania from Turkey. Turkey takes Budapest from <laughs> Russia. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I mean, did anybody even go up one? I mean, I think, no. you know. I, no, this is, um, this is the definition of dipsy doodle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like there is no change in dots here. You know, I, right. just, I, I just hear the uh, the roundabout song, right? <laughs> <laughs> there is some change of dots in the north, though. Tell us about yeah. it, Siobhan. Yes, um, I am happy to see that Germany finally did get into Denmark. Um, you know, St. Pete goes to Norway, so bye-bye Northern Russian Dominion. And France, as expected, takes London back. And so... Uh, uh, England is able to stay. England has three dots able to keep all three units because there is a retreat available for London to mm -hmm. North Sea. So, yeah. All right. all right. Let's see. Winter 1907 sees only Germany put down a unit, <laughs> and that <laughs> is an army. Uh, oh, well this done. board is delightful. <laughs> well yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> all right. Spring 1908. Who would you want to be on this board? Uh, Siobhan, we'll start with you. Oh, um... I'm going to say Austria. <laughs> exactly at the bar um i you know if i want to be serious about the game i think i'd take france if i want to have some fun um germany <laughs> depends on my motivation here france still has guesses right and italy uh italy italy's italy really strong i actually debated that for a moment um just but the all the dipsy doodle in the balkans is throwing me off yeah, this is uh, this is like modern art on a diplomacy board right here. <laughs> uh, Adam, who would you want to be? You know, I mean, I, I actually kind of like the Italian position here. I mean, I'm not sure, you know, there's not much progress to be made against uh, the French. Um, but I, I actually think the position in, in in Austria and the Balkans can get better for Italy, perhaps. Um, again, I, I really would have preferred to see that fleet in Greece doing something useful, you know, either from Albania or Adriatic or something like that. But, um, you know, it, Turkey's not going to be in a position to do anything. It's a question of can you get the drop on Russia or not? Yeah, Italy, Italy seems to me could get uh, could come out on top here, but it would require committing uh, two units to this theater that he's been reluctant to. And one is mm -hmm. uh, Piedmont and 
the fleet and grease, like you said, has been over here. It just hasn't been active. Yeah. So, uh, all right, let's see. Uh, let's see how this works out. Spring 1908. We'll stay in the east with you, Anton. <laughs> I, I got to remember who you're talking to. Okay. Um, so what happens? All right. We've got um, more of the so-called dipsy doodle, right? So, um, <laughs> so we've got Budapest taking Romania. We've got Tyrolia taking Trieste, uh, but of course the Russians retreat into Budapest. <laughs> <laughs> we, swap, we, swap a few, we swap a few more dots here. Uh, you know, interesting to point out. Okay, Greece did something useful this turn, right? It bounced Bulgaria from the from the Russians, so I guess I guess there's some merit in that. And then Piedmont actually did go back to Venice and got bounced, which which maybe in some ways is the best, the best of all worlds yeah, for the yeah, Italian, the right? So that, yeah. maybe maybe that couldn't have ended up better. So you know, I really like this. Um, that Russian uh, army in Budapest um, is more or less stranded at this point against three, you know, with a three on two. So, so this could be quite good for Italy. Yeah, and Italy should come down with both of those here, right? Um, I think so. And uh, that's the God. This really is beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> I just want that framed and on my wall. <laughs> we've got yeah, we've got three dots, and they're all with a different uh, uh, occupying army. I, I'm going to enjoy it when Serbia takes Budapest and um, Romania retreats into Serbia. <laughs> it's Serbia. Right. Back here, uh, what's worth talking about in the West? Um, what jumps out to me first is what appears to be an unfortunate misorder by the French that results in none of those fleets moving because Marseille supported yeah. Spain to Lyon, but Spain didn't Spain. move. It wouldn't have gotten in anyway, so it's sort of a... And West, West supported Lyon to West. West supported Lyon... <laughs> Y'all were getting tired. Yeah. Okay. This is well, it's unfortunate we haven't seen uh, France take a supported swing at the Western Mediterranean. This is a, I think this is the second turn that it would have worked. Um, yeah. So, um, okay. You know the the other option France has there, uh, which you know may is a little bit conservative, but is 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 a nice way to set up the line. Is actually to go to Portugal. Yep. Right, and then the fleets advance, and then you have that fleet in Portugal, which is uncuttable support for either Spain or the Mid Atlantic for the rest of the game. And you know, super conservative, super stalemate liney, but maybe I that's agree. okay. Maybe that's I, okay, actually. It's way better than these fleets not moving. And Mike Walsh, I see you in the comments saying you're having wine right now, happily not being ripped to shreds by the commentators. <laughs> However, this was a set of suboptimal moves. Um, and, and, and now, and let's be clear, there are now problems developing in the north for France. Yes. Um, so it does feel like the uh, the power on this board has uh, shifted in the. It has shifted uh, a little bit, and well, green, I like France a little less now in the green direction. All right, let's uh, see the orders for fall 1908. And uh, let's start with where the action is in the east. Um, Alexander. So it looks like the um, Italians, uh, you know, really have, have profited here. Yes, the, uh, the, the Turks do retreat into an Italian dot, but I mean, ultimately, you know, you're you're probably okay with this. I mean, you're, you're going up by two, losing one, You've got the dominant position in the Balkans. Oh, I, and um, um, you know, uh, Turkey gets a little bit too. It's a win-win. It's a why, win -win. why not cover Bulgaria here? What do you have to lose? Well, I think that if you cover Bulgaria, that's fine. But then the Turks are going to retreat to Serbia. Serbia, yeah, 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 very good. Very good. <laughs> so, okay. I think. I, I think. And I think you'd probably rather they be in Bulgaria than yeah, Serbia. No, that's yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, what about the West, Siobhan? Um, As predicted, the French are running into some issues. Um, you know, England gets into Eddy despite North's attempt to support it. Um, pulling the Irish Sea around, deciding to just give up on that whole Western Med fight and just support things to hold. Oh, so. this is just this is just bad tactics up here. If um if Germany was willing to help out, then Germany goes to Norwegian, London goes to um to they York here. either didn't talk about it or didn't think it through. Yeah. Uh, okay, and just just one other comment. Um, the sure. Italians do in fact leave uh, Piedmont. They go up to Tyrolia. I, I like that move actually. I like it a lot. You're now getting more influence in the middle of the board. You're bolstering your position over here. There's nothing. To, nothing's going to happen in France. You don't need the unit there right now. All right, let's push forward here and see what the builds are like. Uh, we see some more armies pop down on the board. One is German and the other is Italian. And oh, a third one is Turkish. 
Uh, so we, we see the, the balance shift decisively from fleets to armies this turn, losing two fleets on the board and yeah. three armies. All right, spring 1909. Uh, let's uh, find out what happens in the West. Siobhan. All right, um, France takes Edinburgh right back. Um, a whole lot more holds down around the Med. Um, Germany takes Norway. It's a battle she wrote. There's not too much exciting happening at this point. Um, the German army that was convoyed to Livonia is coming back now. Mm. So what was That's the disappointing. Point? All right, what about the East? Uh, Adam, tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Italy had a little bit, had some chain moves here that, that failed. Um, so, you know, not, not too thrilled about that. But um, on the other hand, I'm not sure that going Venice to Trieste would have been that much better because I think really you do want to be in Tyroli in case you have to pull down to Piedmont. So, uh, I, you know, it's hard, it's hard to critique these, even though it's a, it's, it's sort of an ineffectual chain. It does end up putting the Turks into uh Romania with uh an easy position to keep Sev in the fall um and the hold in Smyrna is kind of interesting rather than going to Khan to support uh Bulgaria you know potentially leaving opening the possibility of shenanigans in the fall mm -hmm. it's interesting here right because um France is now getting back up to nine, tying Italy for nine. So if Italy wants uh, the lone board top here, it's uh, there's only one country whose uh, dots these can come from, and the, that's the yellow one. Mm -hmm. uh, you also it. have to wonder about what the uh, the Germans are doing. Why are they pulling out of Livonia for Prussia rather than going for something in in Russia or you know even even dropping something into Serbia? Uh, uh, sorry, Silesia at this stage. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, it looks like they've taken the Russian support, um, so perhaps that was a, a condition for that. Um, is that let's see what did Russia do here? Russia did support Sweden and Norway. Okay. Yep. All right, let's uh, find out what happens in the fall of 1909. Let's start in the east. Um, uh, yes, Aaron. <laughs> Well, we get uh, the the uh, the Italian chain, which is the same moves we saw last time work this time because they didn't have Romania cutting Budapest's uh, support for uh, for Galicia. Okay, and now we do see the the uh, the Germans make their move on Russia. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Turks slide up. I mean, the the IT is is still playing uh, nice with each other. Uh, no fleet movement down here. Um, you know, in some in some ways, this is uh, this is wasted moves. But on the other hand, I think this is perfectly fine if you're Italy. Uh, probably not what you want to be doing if you're France, though. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, winter here, and um, we have. I'm sorry, did we did we ignore the West here? We um, we did, but there's not a ton happening. I'm just curious about that convoy where they attempt it's to like get Saint Pete, but it's Saint Pete to Eddie, I believe. Or Clyde. Um, oh. Clyde. <laughs> that would have been amazing, especially because oh, and Kirk Kirk ordered it to Eddie. To Eddie. Oh boy. Yeah, I did. It did not look like those convoy lines were lining up with the. Oh, that's, oh, that's unfortunate because that would have been beautiful. Just fun. So, all right, this is where the game is going to finish. Uh, unclear whether this was. No, is that like right? One more year. One more year. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. One more year. Um. Okay, so one more year then. Uh, this is we got a bunch more armies on the board. Uh, we have got France and uh, Italy tied at nine. Germany has been uh, sneaking back up, sitting at eight now. Uh, who's going to top this board? Siobhan, start with you. I mean, oof. I think it's still got to be Italy. France isn't getting anything else, and I don't know that Germany is getting another dot out of anyone. Not this year. <laughs> Adam, what do you think? Uh, so if there's a, there's a known game end time, so these players probably know that this game is going to about to end. Um, so I guess the question is, uh, you know, are we going to see some shenanigans between Italy and Turkey right now? And, I, and I, I, my guess is yes. Um, you know, the, it might not be the right move in a game where you're going to play to 1915. And, and honestly, this game could easily go that long if it was untimed. Um, but if you're simply playing for a board top, um, you know, I, I, you want to you want to guarantee it. And, and I think the way you do that is perhaps by uh, 
by as Italy perhaps trying to take one of those uh, one of those uh, by getting dotty. Yeah, but we'll see. And you know, so Germany as an outside shot would need to probably take one off of France and uh, Belgium likely, and maybe yeah. sneaks into Saint Pete. That would get uh, that would get yeah. him up to ten, and hope that Italy doesn't get one off of Turkey in the south. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's find out. And uh, first, yeah, there, the it <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. Tell us about it in the. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right, uh, Siobhan, let's start with you. Tell us about um, it. So, yeah, that outside chance of Germany has taken a lot of dots. Um, I'll let Adam talk about the ones in the East in a minute. Um, setting himself up to make a play for, I guess, a play for Belgium. Um, but France, quite appropriately, put something in the channel and in Picardy. Um, and maybe it will be Germany. Yeah, Germany has a problem, though, uh, and that's Turkey. Um, yeah. So. Well, you know, I think I think Russia's playing a little bit of kingmaker here, right? I mean, I think Russia's looking at this and saying, hey, you know what? This is carnage scoring. I get the same number of points, basically, whether I got two, two dots or zero dots. And so... Yeah. So, you, think, so uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm I'm happy to go help out the German here. So um, Turkey's uh, walking out for Italy, and Russia's walking out for Germany. And that, yeah, perhaps that, perhaps there's no shenanigans. Perhaps it's just like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna help the guy we like the most. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, there still is at least a 50-50, even if Russia is on board with Germany. Uh, does Russia support Moscow to hold or support Silesia into Warsaw? And uh, yeah. what do Turkey and Italy do together? Uh, of course, if Italy, uh, if Turkey gives Romania away to Italy and even Smyrna, um, then uh, Italy is, will be uncatchable here. Uh, in the over here in the West, uh, doesn't look like there's much possibility of anything. Correct? Uh, not unless someone messes up. All right, let's. Yeah, uh, and I'm see. just, I'm just noticing in the comments um, that um, you know it sounds like the a lot of the players wanted to end the game at 1909 and. Um, uh, Russia wanted to throw a board top to 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 the Germans, and so uh, I think that may be what led to this. And it's it's really interesting to see Turkey just willing to give up some dots mm -hmm. so that their ally can get the board top. That's actually, you know, how, how much nicer is that 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 Italy didn't have to force them to, to yeah. get them. I mean, but this but this is like you said, uh, it's carnage scoring that um, that makes that gives Turkey no incentive uh, not to do this. Yeah. Um, I very, guess the only the only question is does does Turkey sacrifice third place for fourth place or something like that by doing this and and the answer looks like it's probably not anyway because Turkey's still likely to be behind Germany and France right yeah so, Turkey Turkey was locked into a fourth place um, yeah and Russia point. gets eliminated for all the trouble yeah uh, but it doesn't matter which <laughs> is you know just a just result because it's sort of mean at the end for the person who wanted to extend the game but. Doesn't that make you a little sad, though? It doesn't matter if you get eliminated. I don't know. I mean, it, we can get into the scoring system debate, but then I think we have to bring Maletsky on, and we no. do you want to be here for four hours. Don't say, don't say his name two more times. <laughs> Once I'm is enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this game ends with Italy claiming a substantial board top here. Well done, uh, Peter Cook. We see Mike Walsh and Gary uh, Sturley finish in a tie for second place. So uh, congratulations to Peter Cook. Yep. And uh, any final thoughts on this game, uh, Siobhan? Um, it was a super fun board. I really enjoyed watching it um, from everything I'm seeing in the comments and in some other messages from people. This seemed to be the crowd favorite of the day. Um, highly entertaining. Lots of dynamic shifting. Loved it. And Adam? Yeah, what a what a well played game all around. A lot of, a lot of interesting twists and turns. Uh, just great job to the players. Yeah, well done. Uh, thanks for providing us with some entertainment. Congratulations again to Peter Cook.